Hi everyone, my name is Miguel de Villa. I'm an applications engineer here at Go Engineer, and today I wanted to share with you this quick tip on how to get a lot more functionality out of the move face command using the face selection toolbar. So without further ado, let's jump right into this model. Now this is a little side project of mine. It's a 3D printed hot end mount for my 3D printer at home, and it features a lot of um, internal cuts and embedded hex nuts right here. And from my experience, I've found that my printer, as a result of printer settings and just print orientation, it tends to undersize internal features like holes and um, slots like this by about 0.25 millimeters in size. And what I've done to get around this little um, foible is that I've learned to use the move face command, specifically the offset option in the move face command, to enlarge certain features of my model um, selectively. The reason I don't go back into my sketches and my features and just their nominal values is that sometimes it can be really tedious because of all the different dependencies I've built up in my model and doing direct editing at the end allows me to very easily preserve large regions of my model and affecting only certain areas without having to deal with long rebuild times. And so I learned how to use this technique um, effectively and quickly. And so let's take a look at a simple example of how the, where the move face command would work well. This hole right here is meant to fit around a little placement pin in my printer. And right now it's sized to the nominal value of that um, pin. So I'm going to click on it, click on that face, get the move face option right there, and I'm going to flip the direction by about 0.125 millimeters. So it gets 0.25 millimeters larger. Thus, ideally, it will land very close to the nominal value when it's finally manufactured. So I'm going to hit OK and it's slightly larger. And that's a pretty easy example of the move face command. But let's take a look at a more complicated example right here. This hexagonal slot, which is meant to be the home of a um, embedded hex nut. So I'm gonna click on one of these faces, right click, go to move face, and I'm gonna start selecting faces. And I'm gonna flip the direction of that so that it knows to make it larger rather than smaller. I'm going to select the six walls of my um, little slot right here, and it doesn't give me a preview. That's, and if I try and get it to finish, it gives me an error that I just don't have enough information to give to SolidWorks for it to make and rebuild a feature like this. So what do we need? Well, we actually need all these filleted edges right here because they're connected to these six original faces by some tangency conditions. And SolidWorks does not want to pull these six faces away from those filleted edges. It'll create um, some erroneous geometry. So I need to make sure to select those when I try to create this offset feature. But there's a lot of them. This is where the face selection toolbar comes in real handy. And to enable it, just make sure that when you're in the move face command, you're right here and you check the show selection toolbar. Let me just clear all my selections and let's start from scratch. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to move my mouse slowly and select the all tangent. Now, if you're familiar with the fillet command and the edge selection toolbar, this works in very much the same way. It looks at the surrounding geometry around what you've currently selected and tries to select identical ones. In this case, we're telling it to select all the other edges and faces that are tangent to the one we currently have selected. And this basically cuts our work easily in half. And in addition, it makes sure that it's selecting all the different faces SolidWorks wants to see when we try and do this offset face. Okay. And select these as well because I want that hole to be larger too. And now it's giving me a yellow preview, meaning that I gave it enough information to do what it needs to do. So I'm going to hit check 
And there we go. I'm happy. Now, another reason why I like to use this method is that this deviation from the nominal values when I finally print it, it's actually fairly consistent, meaning that I can compensate it, compensate for it with a simple numerical input. In this case, I'm going to try and make it a global variable. And if I, as I declare global variables in my part, easy as that, I can then control all these different faces, faces and groups of faces with a single variable of how my 3D printer expects to perform. So as I go forward, dial in my settings or just make my printer better in every way, I can decrease this value very easily and manipulate it to get the types of fits and tolerances that I want. And with that, that concludes this video. I hope you learned something new and something that will make your lives a lot easier. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.